All right, today I'd like to demo two things. One, the Bitwig grid challenge that uh, myself and a few friends have undertaken to create a creation that is exclusively a, a Bitwig grid um, device and nothing else. Um, and then second, uh, the, a noise floor brought to you by MacBook Pro's fans because um, MacBook Bros, Pro's absolutely love overheating and so uh, I guess running Bitwig and OBS is just too much to ask so I'll be showing off their fans as well. Now let's get right to it. Let me first uh, hit play and we can hear what I created. Okay, so let's talk about it a bit. Uh, first off, is that you'll notice when I hit stop and play the grid plays and stops. Um, this is because of a handy dandy uh, subgrid here that is uh, the merge div module hooked up to the transport playing module. So essentially when um, the grid is playing, we get a signal from the transport playing module and it switches to the merge to uh, the, the sounds of the grid. And when it's off, um, we go to zero, uh, zero signal, so it's silent. Um, next, you notice that um, my patterns all start out right. Um, right at play and things don't get out of sync. Um, and that's because I have um, over here, where is it? Free run will, when stopping is disabled. Um, so everything starts together. Otherwise, the, um, my sequencers would be all out of phase with each other. So let's look at the patch a bit. There's a, essentially three sections of it. There's the um, chords. There's the bass line. There's the percussion, which is just a bass drum and snare like thing. And finally, the melody, which plays over the chord with some additional notes. Now, if we take a peek at what we are doing for the chord, we see that every measure, um, we are rolling the dice and generating a random note between G2 and F3, um, which is then being quantized into C major, A minor, um, and then from there I'm generating the uh, either the um, uh, minor third or major third depending on what the root note we've generated here is. Because remember it's quantized so it'll just push it. Um, and then the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Um, and the triad from uh, the the from the root, the third and the fifth, is going to three swarms to generate um, a you know a new random uh, chord every every um, measure. And you'll also notice that hey this this leads somewhere. The root note also uh, 
so so okay so yeah now, now we have the base subgrid and what the base note is is it's the lowest note in all the and the generated in the triad um it's the lowest note in the dry triad dropped two octaves and then um feeding into this wave table with some random junk on it that's just me throwing modules together until it sounds good as i follow tutorials so that's great uh and so that that's that note there next we have the percussion which um these first we'll, first we'll go for the um the the kick drum so this is just um you know uh the kick drum here um sound here and then we have a we have a sequencer that's um essentially every uh we have a counter being triggered on eighth notes um and so it's going through each of these steps which are then being uh which are on or offs um on offs yeah on or offs and then that's being ended with a tr the trigger signal so it's becoming a uh, a pulse a um becoming um a uh something that i can gate my um ad with and so and then every measure i am um how do i have this every okay so it looks like every f four measures uh, i am um, generating a new a new patch right these dice are all being re-rolled their values are being compared to constant and they're producing um zero or one which is then being ended by the trigger to create a pulse that will um I'm, I'm not sure. I think this is a is this a trigger? Is this a gate? I don't know. I don't know how this works. I think it's a trigger. Um, I don't know how any of this works. Uh, and, and so that that plays the uh, the bass sound. Um, it's really low in the mix. I should probably. Uh, I'm lazy. Whatever. Imagine a bass sound. Um, and so the other thing that this that that is triggered is the snare. Now this is a little bit more complicated. Um, this actually uh, was originally in my other entry for this week uh, was sixteenth notes, and it sounded way better and way cooler in that context. And this, I just slowed it down because it sounded like crap, and I didn't want to muddle with it. And so it's the same sort of premise, except um, I have some logic. I have I have some probabilities. Um, so that I have, um, so I'm not left with, uh, beats on the offbeat, um, and, uh, exclusively, or, um, just, uh, weird combinations that don't sound good. Um, so I have some probabilities here to, to decrease the chance, whereas over here, I just always, I just made sure that I always had, on um, the one and the three or whatever always had a beat uh, but this I do that with probabilities and I also have a modulator here um, that essentially if you have two consecutive notes and one here see that the volume is a little low on that um, if you have two consecutive uh, notes the the one before it if it's an offbeat will be slightly quieter and I do that via um, I do that via something. Yeah, isn't that satisfying? Something. Okay, moving on. Uh, and finally, I have the melody, which is just you know a couple. It's just arpeggiating through random, um, random ones of these. Uh, what ones of the um, 
of the notes that we've 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 generated um, over here with all the pitch quantizes. So essentially, each of those pitch quantizes goes to a different slot in this merge, and then we choose which of these to mix in randomly uh, via this merge, which is just a series of random numbers that reset um, every measure. So that, that's great. Is it or is it twice a... I don't know, they reset sometime. That's fine. Uh, and then, then more throwing things until they sound good. Uh, I'm using these these rolls to uh, just mess with the skew and the fold of the um, of the sine wave every single beat. Uh, every single beat, yes, that's on trigger here. Every single beat. All right, that's a wrap.